how these five theories, but we'll just refer to it generally, this family as psychodynamic therapies, how they differ from what you've referred to in your writing as instruction manual therapies. <laughs> yeah, well, like that's easy to CBT answer. CBT yeah, so. and prolonged exposure. Well, I, you know, I think good, what I call good therapy has a lot in common, regardless of the brand name of the, you know, that the therapist thinks they're, they're doing. But there's been a movement in the, in the last, say, 20 or so years, um, in psychology and psychiatry. And, 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 and it doesn't mean it's a buzzword. It's marketing. It doesn't mean what people think it means. And the word is evidence based therapy. <laughs> People think evidence based means what it says. Like there's evidence here. <laughs> it's like there is evidence that, that this is helpful. There's evidence that this is more helpful than other approaches. It's not what it means. It's not true. It's, it's a misconception. What evidence based, evidence based therapy really is de facto is it's a code word for very, very brief therapies, you know, typically eight or 12 sessions that are literally conducted, that are conducted in a standardized way, literally by following an instruction manual. So, um, I mean, if you've been talking to people about, you know, research methods, right? right there's the thing that a, a, a particular research study is aimed at finding out. But before that happens, before you collect any data at all, the researchers are bringing a world of assumptions with them. And those assumptions are not scientifically tested. They are, they are assumed a priori. Um, and, and if the assumptions are false, the, the, the findings that rest on them are likewise you know, uninterpretable or untrustworthy. So they say we're going to study evidence based therapy. It means it has to be, it has to demonstrate some benefit in a, in a randomized control trial. That, that's really the definition. But then they smuggle in a shit ton of assumptions that are not scientifically derived and that I would argue in, in some cases are flagrantly false. One assumption is that the way you conduct therapy is in a standardized, uniform way, according to an instruction manual. There is not a shred of evidence to support <laughs> that that leads to better treatment or better outcomes. That's an assumption they bring. The other assumption they bring is it's not, it's not a, a finding of the research. It's an a priori assumption. We decide before we collect any data that this treatment is going to be an eight session treatment or a 12 session treatment or very, you know, occasionally, you know, at the extreme end, because, you know, it's, it's pretty difficult to write a manual for, you know, for anything beyond a, a pretty limited finite number of sessions, uh, 16 sessions at the, you know, at the, at the, at the far extreme. Well, that assumption is false. We, we know a few things. We know a few things from, from more than a century of clinical experience. We know a few, a few things from naturalistic, empirical, rigorous, naturalistic research. How long does psychotherapy really take? So, um, and the answer to that is that people experience some, some, if they're having acute symptoms, usually they experience some remission of those acute symptoms very quickly within the first few weeks. It doesn't matter what the brand of therapy is, right? I mean, just, just the fact that they're doing something and taking active, you know, active agency to try to do something to help themselves is already, a, you know, an, an intervention, right? It's like everybody gets some, some immediate relief generally. Um, but for actual psychological change to take place, right, it takes about six months before, not before the person is well, it's before something starts to shift in what they call it, you know, a clinically significant way. I mean, six months for meaningful change to begin, about a year or two years for the person to actually, you know, really get what they want from the treatment. We know this from a convergence of, of lots of different kinds of studies. Right? So if, if evidence based res, evidence based therapy researchers were serious about doing things based on evidence, those would be the starting parameters. We're going to study therapies of six, six months to two year durations. That would be our starting assumption. Right? Well, what they do is they study therapies typically of eight session duration. Meaningful therapy hasn't even begun. So there's a certain amount of smoke and mirrors about this. And, and then 
And then the smoke and mirrors get worse. They don't ask the question, or, or at least let me say, they don't emphasize the question. Do people get well? How many people get well? What percentage of people get well? You know, or, or, or at least meaningfully better. How, how much better? And do they stay better? They don't ask those questions. They ask a completely different question that nobody in the entire world should give a damn about, except an academic researcher, because the question is an artificial question that has nothing to do with reality. The question the research studies that evidence-based therapy is asking is, I have two groups. I have a group that gets the treatment I'm invested in, and I get a group that gets no treatment or a fake treatment that's not intended to be helpful. And the question is, can I show that there's a st statistically significant difference on average between this group and that group? Is there a difference between the groups? Why should anybody care? It's not an interesting question. It's not a scientifically interesting question. It's not a scientifically relevant question. It's not a clinically relevant question. I don't care if this group is a little bit different from that group. The question that patients and therapists must be concerned with is, are people getting meaningfully better and are they staying better? That's the only relevant question. And there's this magician sleight of hand that goes on. We pretend that we're addressing the important question. Are people getting better? We say, yes, this is an evidence-based treatment. This is the gold standard. This is scientifically proven. But we're not paying any attention to that question. We're only concerned about, is there a statistically significant difference between the groups? So here's where I come in. The people who are sort of championing this cause of evidence-based therapy, they keep pointing to these studies. They say, look, scientifically proven, scientifically proven. Well, the very same studies that they are pointing to, to, to promote what they call, you know, quote unquote, evidence-based therapy, those studies demonstrate scientifically that the treatments are failing the overwhelming majority of people, right? But they deflect from that and they shift the conversation back to st statistical significance. Let me put some hard numbers around that. The most researched condition, you know, you've got to slice things and, you know, and study people with uniform symptoms, at least for research purposes, right? The most studied condition is depression, major depressive disorder. Hundreds of studies on you know, manualized, brief, so-called evidence-based therapy showing that people who get one of these therapies in the immediate short term, on the day the treatment ends, are doing a little better with respect to depression symptoms and nothing else than people who got no treatment or no treatment that was meant to help. Right? They keep pointing to these studies and saying, evidence, science, research. Right? Here's what the studies actually show. Seven out of 10, I want to repeat that, seven out of 10 of the people who get these brief instruction manual therapies do not improve at all or else relapse very quickly. So from my point of view, as a practicing psychotherapist, as a patient, I've been a patient, any good, serious psychotherapist has been a patient. From my point of view, you've got a treatment that even by the most narrow possible out, you know, you know, narrow sort of artificially defined outcome criteria, even by your own researcher's outcome criteria is failing the overwhelming majority of the people who get the treatment. Now you go out in public. And you start saying evidence-based, 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 and people hear that word and they think it means, you know, if I get this treatment, the overwhelming likelihood is that I'll get well, or at least I'll get meaningfully better. And the science actually shows the exact opposite, right? right? So, so there's kind of a, um, this is a smoke and mirrors thing that's, that's going on. There's a gap between what the research actually shows and the narrative or the buzz about what research supposedly shows. And, and very few people understand this. I mean, you know, most people can't critically read and evaluate the primary sources. I mean, they've got to rely on so-called experts to tell them what the studies, you know, show. And the experts say things like, you know, evidence-based, which is not a scientific word. It doesn't have any scientifically defined meaning, gold standard, proven. These are marketing words, not science words. 
right? And, and we're, we're selling a bill of goods to the public and, and to clinicians also, you know, who think science shows that these treatments, you know, science shows that these treatments get people well. well you know, they get some, a, you know, sort of small minority of people who get them well. They don't get most people well. And, and, there's a lot of reasons why, but one really crucial reason why is because the entire literature is absolutely at odds with what we know about realistic durations of therapy, realistic parameters. It takes six months before meaningful psychological change begins. Right? These therapies are over before they started. So, yeah. Th and <laughs> so as far as what your research really shows it, it's not true that any other therapy has been found to be more effective you know, across the board than psychodynamic therapy. In fact, if you look at the major modalities of therapy, you know, legitimate bona fide therapies, I'm not talking about, you know, fringe things, mainstream, you know, mainstream legitimate forms of psychotherapy. In fact, nobody has actually ever consistently shown that any one of these therapies is better or more effective than any other of these therapies. So it, right, that, that's the most, possibly the most replicated finding in, in, in all of psychology research. It's called the, the dodo bird verdict. After the, the dodo bird and Alex, Alice in Wonderland, there's a race and I think it's the dodo bird who says all have won and all must receive prizes. You cannot empirically show differences. And there's reasons for that. And I think it's because the outcome measures are the wrong measures and the treatments are too short, but, but that's, that's another matter. Right? The, the truth is, the dodo bird verdict is well replicated using our current, you know, typical current research methods. We cannot show differences between different forms of legitimate therapies. And in that, you know, sort of empirical literature and that sort of empirical context to bring in the word evidence based and apply it to certain therapies and exclude other therapies, right? Just, just doesn't actually fit, right? Fit the scientific findings. So. Uh, I mean, 20 years of my research in, in two sentences. Um, we have plenty of randomized control trials of psychodynamic therapy, right? more than 300 at current count. The finding is absolutely consistent, right? Compared to the typical control groups that are used in therapy outcome research, uh, right? the therapies are consistently effective. They are at least as effective as the therapies that are promoted branded, advertised as evidence-based, right? So psychodynamic therapy has in fact been empirically shown to be effective. It's part two, part one. Part two is if you really look under the hood of the research on evidence-based therapies, you find so-called evidence-based therapies. Like I said, you find that most people most of the time are not getting well. So there's like the truth about what's going on in psychotherapy research, and there's the narrative and the buzz about you know, what's being shown. Well, there are many things that I'd like to say, many doors that have been opened. But one brief thing before I ask a final question is that I imagine just to add a theoretical gloss to what you've said, that one reason for the lesser efficacy of the instruction manual therapies when compared to the psychodynamic therapies is that the instruction manual therapies are geared toward symptom relief and they're neglecting to use this. Uh, I, I, when I hear this word, I kind of roll my eyes, but the much more holistic approach of the psychodynamic therapies, which is well, at getting well, you at don't the need root. to roll your eyes. I mean, there, there's empirical research on this. You, you, can, you can ask patients, what do you want out of therapy? And if they're suffering from acute symptoms, you know, like most commonly depression or anxiety, of course they want relief from those symptoms. But you know that that's actually way down the list of what they want. People come in because they're having problems in relationships, because they can't get close to people, because you know they don't experience intimacy, because they don't find meaning and fulfillment in in their work and their daily pursuits because they have problems with authority, because they get, get in their own way. They have inhibitions. They trip over their own feet. They, they do things, right? They do things that, that, that get in their own way of having what they want. If you ask people what they really want from therapy, and, and this has been done empirically, right? You get answers like that. And in the mix, if they're having acute symptoms that happen to you know, fit in a category of a DSM diagnosis, yeah, that's in the mix too. But 
it's not even at the top of the list. It's further down the list of what they want. So, you know, there's a, I mean, there's so many mismatches between what psychotherapy is really about and what, what real patients in the real world and real therapists want from psychotherapy and what researchers are studying. It's like they're operating in a, you know, in a, in a parallel universe under, you know, different rules, <laughs> but, but there's only one universe, right? So they're, that, that's one of the assumptions, right? I said they, you know, before you, they collect any data, they make all these assumptions. Well, you know, one assumption is that the world divides in any sensible way according to DSM diagnostic categories. No, it doesn't. People don't fit neatly into these categories. There's no such thing as depression by itself. Depression is not the cause, to me, depression is not a cause of anything. Depression is an effect. You become depressed because of, and by the time you get to a therapist, because of the difficulties woven into the fabric of your life and who you are. You know, you, you don't come down with depression like you come down with a case of influenza, right? I mean, de depression is a, a, an outcome that tells us that there's something else going on that, that's causing difficulties. Right? And, and that's what the th real psychotherapy deals with is the something else. But psychotherapy researchers say, no, depression is the thing. I'm going to look through the world at the world through this lens that filters everything out, everything about the person, everything that a, a, a legitimate psychotherapist would be focusing on, everything that the patient themselves might say they want from psychotherapy. I'm going to filter all that out. And, you know, until there's this, this like tiny little, you know, glint of light, which is your scores on, you know, uh, on, a, on a depression symptom scale. This, you know, this little fragment could come through the lens of what I'm looking for. And I'm going to declare that to be the whole universe. And then I'm not going to do therapy long enough to find out what really becomes of you. I'm not going to look at any like, broader outcomes beyond that. I'm not going to follow you after the therapy is over for any meaningful amount of time to find out whether you actually got any lasting benefits. And on the occasions when people do do that, and the answer is no, like, you know, there don't seem to be much lasting benefits. I'm not going to like, trumpet that to the world and advertise that. I'm going to play that down. That gets published somewhere buried in a, an obscure journal somewhere, right? When the original findings come out and they show a positive effect, we tell the world. When we do the follow-up, you know, a year later, and we find out that the treatment group is basically indistinguishable from the control group, right? no one hears about that finding.